Excuse me. How long you been a pilot? How long you been a pilot? Ten years. Okay. I, I this might be a stupid question, but people keep asking is me. Is it going on TikTok? Uh, no, not on TikTok. Uh, is is the Earth flat? You're not going to answer that? I did. I just came off a seven-hour plane. I'm not going to answer. So it is flat? I'm not going to answer. Okay. That's interesting, man. Hey, this is for everyone that thinks that a plane can go Mach 3.3 on a globe. I did a video on this. And, of course, I had to, like, you know, defend and talk and explain things. And I just get tired of it. So if I didn't reply to you, it's not because... I don't know the answer or I don't have a reply. It's just I'm busy or I'm bored with it or whatever. And every once in a while, I may reply. Anyway, a plane cannot go Mach 3.3 on a globe, period, period, okay? And it has nothing to do with gyroscopes. Want to know what it has to do with? The plane cannot turn going 3.8 it can't bank it can't angle it can't do anything but fly dead pin straight if it does anything but that it breaks apart and explodes I'm telling you right now it happened there's no plane that would be able to go Mach 3.3 whatever that is over 2,000 miles an hour on the globe and be able to stay on the globe. However you imagine that plane staying on the globe and moving with the curve, it can't happen. That plane cannot torque. It can't torque. It can't turn. It will break apart. At Mach 3.3, it goes straight as an arrow. It can't bend, turn, maneuver, nothing. Understand? Are we done? Have a good night. This message is for those who claim to be a Christian and believe in the Bible, but at the same time believe Earth is a spinning ball in space and defend the lies of evolution and heliocentrism. Those who defend the heliocentric model clearly do not believe in the Word of God. Let's take one very important passage in the Bible as an example. According to Book of Joshua, chapter 10, Joshua spoke and the sun stood still. That would be impossible in the heliocentric model. Let's hear what the Word of God says. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, O sun, stand still over Gibeon, O moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. As it is written in the book of Jashar, it's crystal clear that such thing could only have happened on a flat and stationary earth with the sun and the moon circulating above it, as the Bible clearly states in its very beginning, according to Genesis 1. Then God said, Let there be lights in the sky. These lights will separate the days from the nights. They will be used for signs to they will be in the sky to shine light on the earth. So God made the two large lights. He made the larger light to rule during the day and the smaller light to rule during the night. He also made the stars. It's crystal clear that Joshua's account of the sun and the moon standing still could only have happened on a flat and non-rotating earth. Listen to the supreme leader of the heliocentric model explaining what would happen if the opposite took place. Instead of the sun and the moon, if Earth had stood still while traveling around a sun 93 million miles away. What would happen if Earth suddenly stopped rotating for five seconds? That would be really bad. You don't want that. No. Because right now I'm in the latitude of New York City. Earth is carrying me due east at 800 miles an hour. If Earth suddenly stopped rotating, I would fall over and roll due east 800 miles an hour unless I'm strapped to the earth. All of the Atlantic Ocean would wash up on, on Europe and Africa. All of the Pacific Ocean would wash up on North America and South America and billions of people would die. No, you don't want to abruptly stop earth rotation. Mm -mm. But there are those who will not take a stand to defend the biblical model of creation 
of a flat and stationary earth. Instead, they will follow the teachings of atheists or Freemasons and side with those who defend the spinning ball earth. Do not follow those so-called Christian leaders who deny scriptures and defend the lies of atheists and Freemasons. There are over 200 biblical scriptures referencing earth as being stationary with the sun, the moon, and the stars revolving above earth. Those people are more interested in looking good to men instead of honoring the word of God. As John Calvin said when defending the Holy Scriptures, we will see some who are so deranged, not only in religion but who in all things reveal their monstrous nature, that they will say that the sun does not move, and that it is the earth which shifts and turns. When we see such minds, we must indeed confess that the devil possessed them. Remember, my friends, the Bible clearly states that earth is fixed and the sun and the moon revolve around earth. If anybody, and I mean anybody, tells you anything different, that person is not speaking according to the word of God. Remember Romans 3 verse 4. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Like I mentioned, we have all been programmed to believe that there is no land at the North Pole. But by the end of this video, you're going to realize not only is it home to the mountain of God, it's also home to paradise, the Garden of Eden, which includes a city full of angels that goes underground. So starting off, let me introduce you to Justin Trudeau. He is the Prime Minister of Canada, which in fact is very close to the North Pole. What I'm about to show you is an old clip of him in a room full of elites talking about a trip that he took with his dad to the North Pole. Get ready. Now, do you think a bunch of ice sheets made him have that reaction? No, no, no. It's because he witnessed everything that I'm about to reveal to you. This was a letter written to the Queen Elizabeth I. She was the Queen of England in the 1500s. Let's read what it says here. In the midst of the four countries is a whirlpool, into which they empty these four indrawing seas which divide the north, the North Pole. And the water rushes round and descends into the earth just as if one were pouring it through a filter funnel. Sounds just like the maps that these explorers made in the 1500s. In the midst of the four countries, a whirlpool, and then four rivers coming out of it. Just like it says in the Bible. A river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Look, it says here, it passes through the whole land of Ethiopia, which is Africa. So these rivers go around the whole world. Our oceans are giant rivers. The North Pole controls our tides, not the moon. And it's funny how after the 1500s, all the maps started looking like this. Unknown region. Even NASA satellites, look at those big black holes in the middle. Now, the big mountain in the middle, it is called the Rupus Nigra. Look here. This is straight off Wikipedia. Look what it says here. Rupus Nigra, it means black rock. It is a magnetic black rock mountain located at the North Pole. Except there, under the bright pole, there lies a bare rock in the midst of the sea. Its circumference is almost 33 French miles, and it is all of magnetic stone. Why do you think all the compasses point north? Because there's a giant magnet in the middle of our earth, which is Black Rock. What's the largest investment company in the world? Black Rock. Now I'm about to prove all of this to be true. This right here is Richard E. Byrd. He was a naval officer who received the second highest honor of valor given by the United States. So this guy is legit. And look what it says here, he was a polar explorer. And in his diary, to the pole, he goes into complete detail about how he was let into this place by the angels who lived there, taken underground, and given a message that he was supposed to deliver to the president, which he did. You are being lied to because no one has ever been in space. Let me explain. 
Some propose a theory that suggests space exploration has never happened due to a concealed barrier enveloping our planet. Beyond this barrier, they propose there's no open space or vacuum. Instead, there's water. It may seem far-fetched, but in 1962, the U.S. government detonated several nuclear bombs in the atmosphere, officially as a test of how the atmosphere responds to such explosions, as they want us to believe. However, some argue that they were, in fact, trying to breach this invisible barrier. Interestingly, this project was named Operation Fishbowl. This theory gains support from the observation that many have noticed stars appearing to shimmer or twinkle, as if seen through a liquid substance when observed with the naked eye or through a camera. Enthusiasts of rocketry have also pointed out that the rockets we've launched seem to encounter an unseen ceiling, producing an effect akin to what you'd witness in water. Share your thoughts in the comments. I think the moon is part of the great deception. I don't think it's always had craters on it. You ever look at ancient Sumerian and ancient Egyptian depictions of the moon? It certainly does not show craters. Check out these Roman coins. There's a star in the middle of a rock. How is that possible? That star is supposed to be way farther away than the moon. Or this one. Let me get my spectacles on. Per the NASA website, at the time, most scientists believed that the moon was a smooth sphere, but Galileo discovered that the moon has mountains, pits, and other features just like Earth. Why did nobody before the Renaissance notice the craters on the moon? Yo, you can see the moon has an image of craters with your eyes. You don't need a telescope to see that. Let's look at little kid drawings of the moon. Craters. 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 So you have to ask yourself, when did the moon's image get changed? Most of the people that still think we live on a globe have no idea how satanic the globe actually is. If you research the speed of the earth, it's 66,600 miles per hour, 666. The equation for the curvature of the earth is 0.66 feet per mile squared. The arctic circle latitude, 66.6 .6 degrees north. The antarctic circle latitude, 66.6 .6 degrees south. The tilt of the earth's axis is 66.6 .6 degrees. Here is wisdom, let him hath understanding count the number of the beast, right, or the number of the devil, Satan. For it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6, or 666. Right, and they have to put this stuff right in your face when they put these lies out. Because God told us in the book of Luke 12 verses 3, whatever is spoken in darkness, they must proclaim it upon the housetops, right? So they have many ways of putting this stuff right in your face and letting you know that it's a satanic deception. Right, the deception is to take you away from God's true creation. They don't want you to know God sits above the firmament enthroned. They want you to think you're just some small speck flying through this vast galaxy, which is not true. Right, the Bible says don't be ignorant of Satan's devices, right? Or else what? Or else he gets an advantage over us. Right, we can prove this to be wrong in about three seconds when we understand that God told us the world is stable and that it cannot be moved. He says it many times, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty, the Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also established that it cannot be moved. So look at that, the majesty and the strength of God is literally associated with the earth being immovable. Here it is again, Psalm 104, God's marvelous creation, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Let me ask you a very simple question. Can water curve, or does water always find perfect level? Well, you're about to find out. This right here is a deception. There are many people who believe that water can somehow magically stick to the outside of a ball and curve. Yet yeah, it is a common known fact that water always finds its level, which is why you always see a flat horizon and never a curved one. I mean guys, they call it sea level for a reason. And people's reasoning for this water being able to curve is gravity. But even the National Center for Science Education will tell you that gravity is only a theory. It's actually never been proven. But what we do have is density and buoyancy. So yes, I am saying that the world is flat, but why doesn't the water fall off? Well, it's also commonly known that for water to find its perfect level, it must have a container. And if you look at the biblical flat earth model, which is also the one pilots use by the way, 
Antarctica is actually an ice wall container that goes around the entire earth holding the water in. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 8 verses 27. When he prepared the heavens I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. The depth is referring to the ocean. And the biblical usage of this word compass is a circle or a circuit. So God set a circle upon the face of the ocean. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. Hmm. So what do you see on the same map that pilots use? You see a circular boundary that God created so that the waters would not pass his commandment. All right, Antarctica is actually just a perfect ice wall that is containing all the water. It's all by God's perfect creation and design. Guess what? The flat earth map is the same map used by the United Nations in their logo. Because where's Antarctica? It's missing. Because it's actually this ring around the entire earth. And they know the truth. God's word is true. It is accurate. And you can trust God's word over man. The flat earth map dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni, and he lived from 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also of the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Eddie Allen Carr, known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Banjo. I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific Ocean where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tozy, a professional map maker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online. But if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you.